Boom Girl Show. I'm Robbie Ann McPherson in New York. And I'm Amy Asbury in Los Angeles. Yay! We're uh we're having a ball today and we're not even gonna we're not even gonna bother with like, you know, rigmarole because this is part two of our teen idol discussion. Part one, uh, which um you can look up on our podcast page, we covered Sean Cassidy, who in my in to my mind is the ultimate teen idol and we talked a little bit about john taylor who (laughs) he he is just uh the eternal teen idol let's put it that way certainly Mm -hmm. right we covered george michael we covered donnie and marie who were sort of a set like you know like a salt and pepper set salt and pepper shakers oh i like that right they're like a set you know teen idol and how fantastic they were and we did encourage everybody to um, look up Donnie and Marie's uh, videos from their um, variety show, which ran from 75 to 79, because we were, I mean, these kids must have just worked so hard to, you know, to crank out all those shows and, and do all that, you know, rehearsing. I mean, they had like ice skating stuff on there. Wait, really? Oh, yeah. The, every week they had, well, not every week. Ice but skating. They had... um you know, like the solid gold dancers, they had like this group of ice skaters. I mean, it was How like ice, all of a sudden there's an ice show, you know, it was crazy, just crazy. So, so funny. Yeah. I mean, these two, they're probably the hardest working people, even to this day in, hmm. in showbiz. And I guess they, they did retire from their Vegas residency. Um, oh, did they? Yeah. Like within the last year, I think. Um, and uh, yeah, we can all hear that, Amy. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, guys. That's Amy messing around with her. What, are, what were you doing? Wiping off your camera? Well, well, guys, on my camera, there's, you know, when you're on Skype or Zoom, there's like a little black Sharpie mark. And I tried to get it off in the middle of when Robbie was talking. So oh. <laughs> carry on and forgive, forgive me. <laughs> okay. So in this part two, we're going to continue this discussion. But you brought up a really important component of the teen idol phenomenon which is merchandising which is my favorite thing i love marketing and i love merchandising and i just think the peak of it in my mind was 70s i thought it was really fun uh the teen idol marketing and merchandising was really fun because it was so corny with all those lunch boxes and sleeping bags Oh, yeah. And nightgowns is just so oh, corny. Everything. I just loved it. Yeah, it's like it's like they stuck these guys' faces. <laughs> so funny, yes. You know, if, if it had a surface they could stick a face on, they sold it, you know, like. Right. And it, and it sold. Like, I it can't. It did. I, I, I never had one, but I do recall um, some Sean Cassidy pillowcases. <laughs> I remember those. That's <clears> so <throat> cute. Yeah. And and there was a doll, which um, a doll, yeah, a uh, Karen, my my bestie that I went to the show with, she mm-hmm. presented me with a Sean Cassidy doll for a uh, one of my birthdays. So I, what was it wearing? I was, was it wearing the 30s. white pants? No, um, the doll. You know what? He's packed away right now with my like BG's lunchbox. Or did he look like a boy? No, the doll. He looked like a boy. The doll. Okay. The doll was. Um, was like a man um but okay. it it was like uh he, i think he had like a red red jacket maybe and now be honest did you take off his pants and try to look and see if he had like stuff down there no i didn't have one when i was little oh i didn't oh. have one till i was in my 30s and not hearing myself say that as the words come out of my mouth no i'm afraid okay. for myself no no no, no. it's because it, it's because karen, cute. Found, it's karen cute. found it on ebay you and know she what? gave I, it to me when as you a, find as something on resident. ebay all bets are off it's just cute it's like it's yeah. it's nostalgia. It's it's fine. Right. And it was also after I saw him at Whole Foods. So that's a, that's a there was, a, there was like a, log- a logical trigger, you know, to that whole thing. Back to the merch. So merch. Um, but I'm interested in, in your in in your point of view um too here because you were a little later, right? I'm child of the seventies, you're child of the eighties. So 
the eighties was a little bit different of a merch life than uh, than the seventies. You know, a, a different different things were going on. Um, so, what what Teen Idol merchandise did you actually own in the eighties? It wasn't the same. Um, I don't know if there was one big world marketing. Uh, company that took over all of the BGs and you know, Bay City Rollers. <laughs> but it wasn't the same in the 80s. We did not have a bunch of merchandise for Madonna. and Dur- I mean, Duran Duran had these little pins, buttons that you put on your shirt, but I don't recall any kind of sleeping bag or lunchbox with any of those bands on it in the 80s. The last one I remember was the Bee Gees, which is, I had when I was six, which was like 1979. Um, but yeah, we didn't have the the lunch boxes. Our teen idols did not have the same marketing people, and uh, not only that, but they maybe the the contracts. In my head, it's a possibility that the '70s people said, "Wait a second, we're not getting enough money," and some kind of legal thing went down, and then it was advised to these new '80s stars, "Do not sign the merch contracts; you get nothing, and they're using your likeness." <laughs> maybe, Something went down. Yeah. Maybe somebody wised down. up. Mm-hmm. Somebody was <laughs> lawyers got a hold of the whole thing and said, "Don't sign this." So <laughs> we didn't have the same machine, so it wasn't as fun. Oh, uh, well, there was t-shirts, there was buttons, but you know. Well, yeah, of course the t-shirts and um, yeah, but uh, see again, that's that's music, mostly music focused merchandise, right? Like, like on a family ties, for example. Was there a family ties lunchbox? I'm going to I'm going to Google there this right now. There might have been, but it was interesting. I think there was another company that kind of took over lunchboxes also because the tin lunchboxes went out and then these kind of rounded plastic ones came in and they were different. And the tin ones, I feel like had not only TV shows, but they had um musical acts. And they had movies, and they had Sesame Street. They had everything. But when it graduated, I'm going to say 1982, everything turned into these rounded clip lunch boxes. And that's when Garfield the cat was really big, and uh, Strawberry Shortcake, and those kind of things started coming in. And the, the teen idols were out as far as lunch boxes went, and sleeping bags went, because all the sleeping bags suddenly were. Strawberry Shortcake, Garfield, Star Wars, um, Superman, Spider-Man, you know, that sort of thing. So, okay, yes. this is this is interesting to me because it goes back to what you said in part one about the aging, right? And mm-hmm. the market kind of aging out. So I'm looking at a, <laughs> on eBay, there is a, uh, a listing for, a lot of meaning, you know, a group, mm-hmm. a clump, a collection of lunch boxes, like vintage lunch boxes for nine hundred dollars. Come on. And you can get included right. in this. I'm looking at uh the California raisins, um, DuckTales, Dennis the Menace, um, there's a Dick Tracy one, a bazooka bubblegum or a bubblegum one. They said late eighties, early nineties, but go on. No, but then there's an Osmond's one. Shout oh. out. Six million dollar man. Oh my god. A Clash of the Titans. Oh, Clash that's of a the must. Titans. Holy that's crap. That's a must. Wow. A Rambo. Okay. Now what kid is gonna carry a Rambo lunchbox? Oh, there's always a kid. The kid who liked, um, uh, whose older brother had an ACDC shirt and the kid who taught everyone curse words. That's who. But, uh, but is he going to carry a lunchbox? He seems like a brown bagger. Oh, no, he's a brown bagger. Yeah. Right? Scratch yeah, that. like yeah. I, that's kind of a weird. I wonder how Actually, those sold. Right. You know? Mm. Um, oh, and HR Puff and stuff. Yeah. Well, but that's so, a good one. So, okay, here's what I'm thinking. Help me work through this. Okay. So in the 80s, yes. you don't have all of these lunchboxes for teen idols because in the 80s it was no longer hip to have a lunchbox right in it the... was up until about fourth grade right right so yeah that's kindergarten what I mean. second third fourth so there's about four years of time where you are going to carry a lunchbox yeah but it's skewed a little younger like yes. in in the 70s 
I think you had a little more room, just a little bit of, of the lunchbox age, right? So, so in the 70s, you could get the Bee Gees lunchbox, for example. Now, the Bee Gees, while they are idols, you know, they Certainly weren't are. teen idols. Like, they, they were a very mainstream act at that point. Yeah. Yeah, and I have a, a Bee Gees lunchbox. It's not a teenaged, you know, type thing. Like, it's not... Well, just by the fact that it's a lunchbox, though. Well, you that's, gotta be that's between kind of... one and eight years old. Yeah, but it was in the 70s. So, okay. so, but then you go into, like, the 80s. Wait, did I just say one and eight years old? I meant five and eight years old. Oh, yeah, Sorry, you said on. one and eight years old. <laughs> Um, so, but then you get into the eighties, you don't Uh see like, um, you know, like the Rambo lunchbox to me is the oddity. Like that's, that's a little strange. That is odd. Like what eight year old is, you know, who's letting their eight year old watch Rambo and. Oh, everybody, every eighties parent was the worst parent. I'm sorry. (laughs) Because they all, TV was brand new when they were young and to them it was like, oh, howdy doody and, you know, the honeymoon. Like, they didn't realize that anyone would have the audacity to put out horrible things for kids. So they just let us watch everything. Not knowing how awful it really was. So anyway. Yeah, and they're also um, they're also probably rebounding from their strict rules childhood right and there were I mean, two at, fathers yes yeah i mean it's gen x you know we had the 80s parents right and look how messed up we all came out so oh for goodness I, sakes, yes yeah i can't um but you know the 80s was also a naughty time i mean look at all the 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 craziness going on in the world and blah 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 so who are our teen idols in the in the 80s So in the 80s, they were different every two or three years because there's always a new set of girls entering puberty, you know. Yeah, but that's a shorter cycle, I think, Mm -hmm. than in the 70s. I mean, Sean had a good, he had a good four-year run. Good four years. Four year? Oh, that's pretty long. Well, okay, three. No, four. Because he was on the Hardy Boys. Eighty teen idols were the Dukes of Hazzard, I'm going to say. Oh, Um, now there's, there's a lunchbox. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. they had my my late brother was an absolute lunatic. He loved too. the Dukes of Hazard. Me too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that the, they were teen idols. I feel like the um, Bo and Luke Duke were heartthrobs. Yeah, and, and then may went... may I say I mm-hmm. had an opportunity to meet uh, Tom Wopat and John Schneider um, a mm-hmm. couple years ago, and they are both just to this day really handsome gentlemen really yeah. well i don't doubt yeah, that they, of course. they still got it okay they're still and very nice i, I mean they were really nice to me but were they, they really were... short and small like all tv no. stars oh my god john schneider is a tree of a man i like to hear that he literally like i i got a picture taken and i you know and i'm standing there and i sort of like reached to just put my arm around him like in a picture pose and it was like my arm went forever you know, because hmm. he he's just this giant tree of a person. And Tom hmm. Olpat's not, he's not a short guy either. He's none too shabby. No, they, and they were very nice and, and both just adorable. Really I cute. I love that. Yeah, and in great shape, you know. I love that. Well, yeah. they were certainly idols and there was merchandise on them. Yeah. There was merchandise. It still was kind of kissing the Bee Gees for a minute in the very beginning of the 80s. Um, and it was, um, Andy Gibb was kind of... And then it was like the Dallas guys. And I'm trying to think of as it went on to 82, 83, I would say Christopher. Oh, no, that was 70s. Christopher Reeve was kind of a heartthrob in the, you know, late 70s, early 80s. Was that might have been. Te- a, you know, I'm having a, teen, a lot of though. trouble, though, finding a teen, um, a teen idol. I'm trying to think of a solo kind of an Elvis. Who was the solo you know who was a big deal was Michael Jackson. Oh, God. What idol. is the matter with us? He was the teen idol in the 1980s. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. We're so dumb. We're, I'm going to say Michael Jackson, 80, you know, thriller. That yeah. Was oh, he, yeah. He major, was, a, he was major, the major, living major. end. I don't, I don't recall Michael Jackson lunchboxes, but I, I'm figuring they were out there. I don't right? either. And then, of course, Madonna 
was strangely an idol for a lot of girls. She was right. a teen idol. It wasn't a crush. I mean, it kind of was. I, I was a... I was a big Madonna wannabe. But oh I was God. 10, you know, and Madonna hit me like that. Like, wow. But there wasn't a lunchbox or a sleeping bag of her, but it was a, that was a teen idol to us. Didn't, she wasn't a teen, she was 20 something, but. Um, okay. I'm looking on, I'm looking at Michael Jackson lunchbox and I'll, <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> mm. I do find a Michael Jackson bad, the album cover, uh, an insulated, the poofy bag kind. So maybe no. that maybe that's what we're dealing with is the tin lunchbox was just out of style. So the, de- the, the death of the tin lunchbox or whatever company or distributor that was, was kind of the end of a lot of that, that whole contract. And then I honestly think it had to do with legalities. I honestly think that. Yeah. Somebody realized, wait a second, they're still selling a doll of me and I don't see one penny. You know, right, that's, right. I honestly think that's what happened. Yeah, and I get the feeling that Michael Jackson probably um, had some pretty uh, severe control over his image and things like that once he became an adult. He had oh, a good legal team. Yeah, I'm trying to find, um, I don't know. I mean, do we think Bon Jovi? John Bon Jovi was a teen idol in the 80s? I do, I do, but that wasn't, it was 1986 when You Give Love a Bad Name, and I think there was a ton of, I will say, The Rise of the Poster came back. Oh, when yeah. When Bon Jovi, because my sister had this door length, it was so embarrassing, actually. <laughs> he had this giant bulge, and she was 12, and it was on the back of her door, it was, it was man size. So he was like an older teen idol. You know, it's the Paul he Stanley was a effect. He grown-ass man, yeah, and it was, was kind man. of awkward. Yeah. Yeah, it was kind of awkward. But there was the, he had the posters, and that was big, those posters of him. Did yeah, you have I, posters I had, on your wall? Oh, hells, yeah. You know, I so what still, were your posters? in my media room right now, hanging. I love that you have a media room. That's so yeah. chic. It sounds crazy, but it's just an alcove with my big TV. But in like my in my media room, I have a black velvet vintage poster of Andy Gibb. <gasps> and I also have a vintage poster of Sean. That's the same poster that used to be hanging in my room when I was a little kid. I like that you're on a first name basis since um, you saw Whole Foods. Yeah. <laughs> you're like we, Sean. We go way back. Um, yeah. And I also have a poster of a lesser known. Mm hmm. Uh, teen idol um clinton spilsbury who was the lone ranger in in um the legend of the lone ranger which was a much derided movie that came out in uh, i think it was 1980 and um what was it about that certain gentleman that caused you to want a poster oh my god what did he look like google him he is what, stunning. Describe him. Describe Beautiful. Him. He very tall, blue eyes. You know, chiseled jaw. He looks like the Lone Ranger. He's the Lone Ranger. Well, the Lone Ranger has a freaking mask on, doesn't he? Well, but you know, the movie tells the story of how he became the Lone Ranger. And okay, so he's tall. Now it's the seventies or eighty. So what was his? Did he have feathered hair, or did they actually give him short hair? He had short. He had short hair. Um, the movie was, of course, set. In I know, you know, but you know cowboy they still times, kept their hair like Clash of the Titans. Still <laughs> no, they didn't do that. Hair. They didn't do that. Even Little House in the Prairie, it's supposed to be, you know, the the gold rush days, and they have like like this this Vidal Sassoon um, <laughs> cut, circle cut, you know, um, and a bowl cut. Wait, so and Dorothy Hamill cuts. So he, what was his name again? That's not a very movie star name. Clinton Spilsbury. Well, okay, I, Clinton's nice. Clinton's, right, Clinton's legend no pun intended um he made this movie and it was his only starring role and he was so vilified over the movie everybody hated it i don't really know why i mean i is there a beloved version before it that was just a beloved well there was clayton moore the tv lone ranger oh And, and you know he he was to most people and and the producers of the film in the in 1980 whatever um, they inexplicably decided to ban Clayton Moore from going around to like Comic-Cons and stuff and wearing the mask. 
it's kind you of you know which which drastic. of course it just pissed everybody off everybody that was a fan so people were mm -hmm. kind of out for blood anyway now i was 11 12 when the movie came out and i was oh, no wonder i was really into horses and um and i just i loved the idea of of silver and you know and this whole thing and i also loved um just the the whole lone ranger if you've ever read the lone ranger's creed um it's I just what i have it's it's really cool. I'm I, I'm gonna Google you do it. Do love while horses. You're That's so seventies of you, by the way. I love horses, and I you know I love teen idols. But um, I didn't think the movie was so bad. I mean, it's well, you were eleven. What did you know? No, I watch it now. I own it now. Oh, you watch like, it now? Look literally, I watched All it. Right, so when I got my giant TV, it was the first movie I put on. You know, it was number two, Xanadu. So <laughs> that's where my movie tastes. All like. right. So what other posters did you have in your room when you were like? So how young were you when you first put up a poster or asked to? I well, Sean was probably the first poster. So ten, you were yeah. 10. Then then I had a poster of Andy Gibb. Of I course. had a Star Wars poster. Um, that was I think, and then I would hang up the little foldouts from Tiger right. Beat. So you know, various and sundry little. Now, you know, did pictures. you go to the grocery store with your mother? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I so went... you would go with her and then say, can I buy this magazine? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And there was Got no, it. you could not deny me my Tiger okay. Beat. And I think I had a subscription mm. to Tiger Beat. What was the other one called? Tiger there was Beat Tiger Star. Beat. What was it? There was Tiger Beat and Tiger Beat Star. Oh, my. Yeah. Must have been more posters. Yeah, I don't know what the difference was. I had a subscription to one of them. Okay. Um, but in the 80s. Was see, Bop out then? What's Bop? Oh, it was one of those Tiger Beat magazines. Oh, we had. oh, oh I, ne I never knew about Bop. And even Bon Jovi was in Bop. Like, I think <laughs> Probably still, much against his wishes. It's still um, going on. It's still out there. <laughs> Duran Duran, you know. Yeah, um, okay, so they you, were big you... on posters. Um, in the 80s, I had Michael Jackson... I had mm -hmm. like three Michael Jackson posters. Okay, so let me I ask you this. Was flipping Did you have the white, him. where it's a white background and he's wearing the yellow vest and the yellow bow tie? Yeah. That was one of the posters. Yeah, and, he ha and there's like a jewel on it. Like he's got uh -huh. like a jewel pin. Yeah, I had that one. I had a thriller, um, like a, you know, album cover yeah. type one. And then mm -hmm. I had some other smaller one that I probably pulled out of a magazine or something. What um, do you think was the best Michael I liked him in Billie Jean the best. Billie Jean. You know, I, I, I can't even answer that because it's so tied to the music for me. And when did you first get that feeling like, wow, this guy is wow. I was nine and I saw Billie Jean. And when I first heard that bass line, that do, 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 I, yeah. I was like eating oh, corn nuts and I just like, line. That album is. I dropped my cornet. Sick. I was like, "What am I hearing?" Yeah, that that was just a beautiful work of art. That whole record, and so was "Off the Wall." I think if I Who's had to pick, you know? that was a great one. The wall. I feel like we're just getting backwards when I hear that. See, I mean, the music is just. I I thought he was the most handsome, uh, during his "Off the Wall" phase. Mm -hmm. That's when I was when I had thought he was the most beautiful, mm -hmm. you know, and then he really started to change his appearance um, yes. with Thriller. I thought he was still really beautiful and handsome, but something mm -hmm. turned, you know, like with bad. Like, I don't know. He went a little too was, far with the plastic surgery. And I was so fickle. His, as soon as bad hit, I was out. I yeah, there was something. I, was I, I loved the album, but I, did. I, I didn't think it was as inspired as thriller or off the wall were and and he just i don't know he there's there was something um almost sinister or something weird that started it was to an undertone yeah yeah and i can't put my finger I on it, I never like will, it but um i did like beat it i thought he looked adorable and beat it with his little the video i'm talking yeah. the videos oh those and two songs. thriller he looked hot in thriller i he looked i don't i like to the least but i did like uh beat it in billy jean yeah i uh, beat it i think beat it's probably my favorite song on that album i love great that. song yeah r.i.p eddie van halen
Oh, right. Eddie. He ripped that solo. That was so cool. So cool. Yeah, and he kind of reinvented the song a little bit too. Like he, he, he took out a section or something, and you know, I, I just, eh, I love music. I can talk about it all day. But anyway, so back to '80s teen idols. So, mm-hmm. what we're looking at here is, I think we kind of have a realization mm-hmm. that the like what new kids on the block were they the ones appealing to the you know the real young young girls like were they no, the Sean Cassidy the of the to, 80s all the way to they were major I was 16 when they came out so I was into uh hair bands poison and all that so the, I was a little past them but I remember going down to Hollywood with my friend Tamar and at the Bellage Hotel on Sunset it was um it was a giant massive crowd of girls our age new kids were staying there really it was wild so new kids was the craziest and i can't really speak on it although i did think jordan i was like well maybe i might not turn down jordan i came down to it but um they were major 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 boy band you know you all know and that was i'd say 89 88 89 90 and what about like Bell Biv DeVoe and New Edition, you know, there, there was oh, sort of, great. yeah, they there was great. like a boy band movement. And I think a lot New of the, Edition was so great. Yeah. Like so, the younger so girls, I think they were in, into that. I mean, as you and I have talked about, of course, the older, you know, I mean, to me, if I was 10 and I saw like some 16 year old tart hanging around Sean's dressing room, you know, I would have been like, Oh, <gasps> you know, but right. Um, <laughs> right. I can't imagine that, that there weren't. <laughs> so, so I I'm not surprised that that new kids had an older older audience. I mean, there was all ages, but yeah, they were well, high school. I mean, we were 16. We were a little too young to be going down there anyway. But um, yeah, 15, 16, and also a lot of 10 year olds. I mean, a whole bunch of different people. Yeah. But yeah, there's always. I think every couple of years, there's always a teen idol. Because there's always somebody coming of age to purchase the merchandise and the music. So it's always a good business decision if you do it right. But, um, and I did, I do think that um, that was the next doll that came out was the new kids on the block actually did have a doll line. So I feel like we hadn't seen that. There was dolls of new kids on the block. Yes. And also of Beverly Hills 90210. That's getting into the 90s, but those are really major teen idols that had the merchandising and the marketing of the things we had seen in the seventies. It kind of skipped to that point where there was the dolls again and the lunch boxes again. But yeah, I bet there was a new kids on the block lunch box. They were the return of the major, 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 major merch. Yeah. Well, yeah, they had that, they had that crazy manager, right? That manager manager that he was like, you know, I mean, he just monetized every inch of those poor boys, right? And, well, poor I, boys, I mean, they I probably... That's in sync. I can't remember if that's... I, that might be Lou Pearlman. Oh, but yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. Years after. I'm sorry, I'm However, mixing up my boy bands. There's definitely, there was a gap of about 10 years, but I will say, New Kids on the Block, the return of major, major merchandising, even crazier than we had seen in the 70s. Like, everything. So, just for the heck of it, I googled... Um, teen idols of the 80s, right? To see who we were right. forgetting. Run, run them by me. I'll and tell there's you a couple here. Okay. Kirk Cameron. Big. Very right? big. Huge. Huge. Adorable. Oh my God. What an adorable. And then here's one that mm. I think, frankly, I think he's in the John Taylor category. Really? Who? I think he's the eternal teen idol, Rob Lowe. He was too pretty. Like, I, I, I was like, no. I oh my him. God. I, no. about, I, I felt this way about Brad Pitt. It's just, I, I just had no interest. My sister had a poster of him with his sax from St. Elmo's Fire. Oh, <laughs> Billy. <laughs> yeah, the, this, uh, this list mentions the outsiders, the, the outsiders, that whole cast was, uh, they were all over the magazines. It was Matt Dillon, Patrick Swayze was a big one. Um, C. Thomas Howell, Ralph Macchio, even Tom Cruise was in that, but he was not yet well known. And Rob Lowe, I'd say every girl I knew, Rob Lowe was the hottest, you know, 80s guy or 
He was definitely. Well, he he had the, he was like the prototype. I think he was a pretty boy. He was really, yeah, he was really like pretty. born to be a teen idol, right? Like super beautiful. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So they're also trying to tell me that Johnny Depp was an eighties teen idol, which I think is a true. A little bit later, and yes, I'd you say know, 88, 20, 89. 21 Jump Street. Yeah, yes. that whole era. Um. Oh, Amy, we're fired. Ooh. We Ooh. forgot about the Karate Kid. Ralph wow, Macchio. I said Ralph Macchio just now. Ralph Macchio. Oh, he you did? Skinny. Oh, he wasn't like some major, major teen idol. He was in the Outsiders. He was cute. You yeah, know. but the, I mean, the Karate Kid, that was huge. It was big, but it was yeah. also big with boys. So it wasn't like he was a singing guy. You know, he was. Right. Was, Again, not the music. Not yeah, the, the music, music but it makes was a difference. A giant movie for both boys and girls. And they admired him for his bravery. It wasn't just like he was cute and sexy, it was kind of a bigger thing what in the heck were the parents thinking when the Beatles hit you know like because they were really the first um kind of you know rock band and they were the first uh where people were really packaging these guys and pushing them out there and stuff and and giving them these identities it must have been so weird for parents in 1964 like sitting there watching Ed Sullivan going what the hell is this <laughs> was it though i feel like people have got to remember what it felt like to be young and just be excited about the opposite or the same gender well i i agree with that but rock and roll was new right oh, it just seems so uh like dangerous yeah yeah i mean you know they're banning elvis from shaking his hips and you know i and i think we got to we got to throw some props to him. I mean, he was, he was the first, the first teen idol, right? You I know? think so. Screaming girls and all that. And then, and then, um, the Beatles and then, oh, and then the dirty rolling stones, you know, they were the, <laughs> they were the bad boys. Yeah. 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 So aim, we're out of time yeah. again. We spent two whole sessions yapping about, uh, teen idols. I feel like we fleshed it out. I'm glad we discussed it. I yeah. feel like I've been set straight and I feel very satisfied. So um, I guess that's it for the teen idols, at least for now, until we figure out something else we want to. Well, talk I love talking about it and I'm glad we had the discussion and Me thank too. you everybody for joining us. Yeah. Thank you for listening. We, we so love that you come along for this ride. And if you have something you want to hear us um, yammer about, I can't imagine. I love that but... word yammer. <laughs> yammer if you uh you know if you want to or if you want to put your own two cents in um look us up on twitter um it's glitter bee girls we really love you guys we appreciate you listening and um you want to say goodbye aim goodbye and thank you for joining us mm-hmm.